All right, all right. Welcome back, part two of my uh, book tour. We're going to start off by uh, looking at the top of my this secondary shelf. And what do we have here? We've got Arnie as the Terminator. We've got an owl. This actually, um, pull, pull, this owl exists to uh, hold your glasses. Check it. So yeah, we move on. Um, my friend wrote this. It's a, I guess you'd call it a short story. And it's very entertaining. If you can get your hands on it, limited press edition. I'm sure there's an ebook. I have to ask him about it. Um, candles, as asked, with a salt lamp for some reason. Oh, shit. Next one. Trophies, multi tools, another horse. Remember the horse from the first one? And here's a horse's butt. Um, yeah, Mr. Chetty. Yes. Say no more. Say no more. Now, if you haven't read it, I wrote a an article about why this is the worst book I've ever read and uh, yeah I highly recommend somebody should read this it's just awful awful Atlas Obscura this is a really fun book it's a, like a, a guide to where all the weird things in the world are and uh, if you have any ideas for places to go places things to see that's good fun very thorough book now uh, yeah one of these lonely planet guides to the world it's a couple of pages on each each country and each territory is really entertaining. Finnegan's Wake, if no one's ever read it, this is a monstrosity. Yeah. Now, James Joyce, probably favourite or second favourite author after Kurt Vonnegut, um, but only up to Ulysses. Finnegan's was his last book and it was just, oh, it's, it's atrocious. It's really, really t difficult to get through, and basically people aren't even sure if it's a joke or not. Portrait, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Here's a colouring book. Bunch of comics by Lunig. Yes, people seem to like him. Uh, Spanish dictionary again. We've got some Jane Austen written in Vietnamese for some reason. I think I just picked that up somewhere, I don't know. Oh yeah, this is cool. This is a guide to all sorts of edible weeds and, and what have you. Things you can pick up on the side of the road and put in your mouth. Or well, some of them you have to cook, but... For example, dandelions. Yeah, all about dandelions and so on and so forth. Stop mowing your lawns, Australia. Eat them. Yeah, I went on a walking tour with the guy who wrote this pamphlet and talked all about the... He just showed, him, showed everything that you can eat on the side of the road. Dark Emu, it's a good one. It's quite a popular book at the moment. Uh, Stalin's Ghost, Crime Fiction. I don't know why there's tarot here. Must be Bridget's. Cards, luggage scale, some trivia games, and what have you. And now here we go into. Oh, yes. Just Jackrabbit 2 Holiday Hair. Look, if you, if you saw the video we, we put out about uh, unboxing a huge amount of DVDs, then that, that was in there. And we found these other very old. Um, PC games. Anyway, uh, here's another piece of fiction that's good. Uh, that's a chocolate milkshake if you're thirsty. Um, yeah, some other books unseen, candles and what have you. Uh, big box of golf balls. We live near a golf course and these just show up on the lawn from time to time. Now on our bottom shelf we have uh, a bunch of DVDs. Again, these are all just uh, pulled straight out of the um, uh, that big bag that we got at one point. There you go. Um, now, uh, oh, here's a yoga mat too. Now I'm going to um, pause the video here and make my way to the uh, the next shelf. So you're there. All right, friends, here we are. We've got um, the third shelf in the house. Oh, there's actually a great shelf. <laughs> Found this on Gumtree. It was uh, just a hundred bucks for the thing. It's amazing. Anyway, we'll start at the top. We've got a, a couple of toys: Gizmo and Kermit, a shark and a tiger. Candle, like uh, these are, it's fake, but it's nice. And here's a bunch of saxophone books, and that's because I have my music stand and saxophone here. That's this is where I practice. Anyway, going uh, across the top, we have a map of Ireland in the style of Tolkien, and all the place names are in Irish. Okay, so here's the thing we haven't done yet. Yeah, everyone's got these nanoblocks hanging around. That's us. 
Here's a, a funky little jewelry thing, I think. A uh, little boxy thing. And a pot. Nice pot here. Let's get down here and uh, make our way across. We've got uh, a couple of cookbooks. Uh, World Without Bees. Um, yeah, most of this shelf here is Bridget's stuff. And I think a lot of it comes from when she moved out and she'd learned to cook and what have you. Yeah, Bryce Courtney. It's good stuff. The Assistant, it's a, uh, a thriller. It's quite good. World of Chickens, picked it up at a market and I haven't read it yet. But I'm, yeah, looking forward to it. Everyone's got Harry Potter. I've seen that before. This one is quite interesting. It's all about the origins of violence. If, uh, if you're interested in that kind of anthropology. Uh, Book Thief is good. That was a nice, uh, this, was a, this was a bit crap. I have to be honest here. Uh, yeah, we've got some more Lord of the Rings, and here's a nerdy thing, a guide to Tolkien. Yeah, I wonder, out of me and Bridget, I'm not sure who is the bigger nerd, honestly, but uh, we'll find out over time. Here's a bunch of fantasy books. I haven't read most of the books on this shelf. I did read these three. Yeah, because I remember we had Northern Lights in high school. That was one of the set texts in, back in year eight. It was a very good book. I think they probably chose it just to... 13 year olds interested in reading uh, Yeah, a whole lot of um, fantasy books along here, and if we continue down here, we have Oh, yes, more Sally Rooney uh, yeah, These ones Don't ask This is a very funny book if no one's read it uh, Just about it's sort of wacky humor and ridiculous coincidences, but uh, fun book fun book indeed um, a bunch of David Zindel books that well, Bridget seems to like him, but I've never read any of these books. I guess I'll get around to it very soon. Got a few sci-fis and, um, what is this? Ah, oh, yes. Painting portraits. Got some of those things. Spirit of the Elephant. Elephants. I mean, elephants are great, aren't they? Best of Australian birds. Here you go. That's a... That's a good-looking book. Now we'll make our way over to the next part of the shelf, and we have oh, a whole lot of Matthew Riley books. I mean, these ones, pure action. Yes. I, I, <laughs> they're not going to win any Nobels for literature, but they're very entertaining. And moving on, we've got books about art and animation and all sorts of things here. Uh, yes, yeah, so quite entertaining stuff here. Um, yep, well, I'm going to... Pause the video again and meet you at the uh, next shelf. Yes, there's more. There are actually more shelves to come. Okay, here we are at the third and, oh, maybe not the third, it's the fourth shelf. And uh, this is kind of like a weird shelf. It's got a few a few books at the bottom. We'll get around to it. Uh, so we'll start off at the top. We've got a nice picture drawn by Bridget. That was a gift for me. That was quite nice of her. Sunglasses, some other random objects here. This is a, this is a fish, apparently. I like it, and this hat comes from Romania. Anyway, this is a, a tripod, which I'm clearly not using at the moment. Moving down, we have um, a case for a zoom recorder. My old glasses, an iPad. Um, diary from 2020. A couple of exercise books. These are, uh, yeah, these go with my language study. These are just things that I, I scribble in. We won't get into it. Oh, maybe I should actually. Yeah, let's have a look. Open up this one. As you can see, we started with French and it became Chinese halfway for some reason. So, uh, oh, when did I stop? Yeah, I was really into it. Just pages and pages and pages. Oh, Morse code. I don't know why I was doing that. But yeah, we see all sorts of things here. Uh, that looks like Swahili for me. Um, yeah. Yep, that's the Swahili. That didn't last too long. That was maybe a month I was interested in that. But yes, here we go back to Chinese, and then just... I, I was using this when I was copying out the um, dialogues from my textbook. Yeah, forgive my messy handwriting. This is never meant to be seen by anyone. It's just scribble, basically. Um, so yeah, I'll move down here. Um, oh, this is the remote to the stereo that's in the garage. Down here we have a, a piece of Australian fashion. And another hat behind there. There's a chest set, tennis container, an empty envelope, 
And uh, oh, this is this is a cool thing. This is solar powered USB charger. So you strap this to the back of your backpack when you go hiking, and you can um, and you plug your USBs into this, so you you never run out of charge while it's, while you're outside in the day. That's that's a good stuff. Um, this one, this is a banjo. Just uh, move that aside for now. This is my guitar. And yes, we're down here. We have a couple more books to look at. Uh, what do we have? Oh, it's mostly just textbooks in this this section. Yeah, yeah linguistics textbooks, ancient grammar. Um, oh. Yeah, if you ever want to go to sleep, here's one. Phonetics and phonology. Oh, this one. Look, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I found this one. This is one of my favourite subjects when I was studying it. Um, yep. Yeah, oh, some great Chinese books. These are. I think a lot of unis are using these right now, but these are excellent. What do we have? Oh, I used that for Spanish when I was there. How was that? Research methods and language learning. Yeah, this is like um, how to design studies and things. It's a really scientific kind of a book. Legal process. That's a fascinating one. Yeah, that was a whole, whole semester's worth of uh, how do courts and police and legal documents use language differently to the average person, what social problems there. And here we go, this is what I was looking for actually. <sighs> a language that many people have heard of and fewer can pronounce. Um, this is better known as the Western Desert language. This is what they, and this is the dialect of Western Desert language, the, the one that's spoken by a, a large number of people around the Uluru area. And uh, it's not a language textbook, uh, but it does have full explanations of how the language works. It's got like thousands of example sentences. Um, I think it probably could be reworked into a textbook if if the motivation existed. But yeah, it's just um, yeah, that's a mind-bending language that one. <laughs> I did spend a bit of time with it. Actually, this one was a gift to me. Uh, I did spend time with it, and I will get back to it. But for the moment, it's not the priority. Uh, and we have a couple of books about gardening and cooking and you know what have you, growing herbs and there you go. Um, so I think uh, that's it for this shelf. I'm gonna check if there's any more shelves, but if the if the if that's it. Oh, actually, there is one more. It's just a couple of cookbooks on it. I'll get but I'll meet you over there. Oh, welcome back to the final. I guess you can call it a shelf. It's just like this weird nook thing in the kitchen, and here we've just got a bunch of cookbooks and stuff. How to barbecue anything. How to use any ingredient, and then a couple of like celebrity chef books. Oh, tapas in there too. A couple of celebrity books. How to cook Chinese food. Foods that harm, foods that heal. Yeah, could live without that one. Yes. So that was a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. A gift, and a gift, and a gift. I mean, I'm sensing a theme that people think that I can't cook, even though I cook almost every day. I'm, I'm confident as a cook, but. People still love giving me recipes. Oh, maybe it's because I like it. I don't know. Anyway, here's a bunch of um, magazines. They all, they all have recipes in them as well. Complete avocado cookbook. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yes, absolute millennials in this house. And this is some tasting notes for different wines. Um, yeah, it's in some empty boxes, but it's a leafy residue in them. So that's been um, this shelf. I think that's all the shelves in the house. I'm going to have to end the video here. Anyway, thanks for watching part two of the um, book sh bookshelf tour. Bye. Oh, sorry guys, I'm back. Just a couple of extra bonus books that didn't make it into the, um, the original video. Uh, not that one. But here we have, this is like, this is actually like the best Irish learner's textbook I've ever seen. It's very thorough. It's got the... Um, it's actually got four CDs worth of audio at the back, if anyone still uses CDs. Otherwise, I think you can get that audio from their website. Highly recommend if you're going to learn Irish. Anyway, thanks. Oh, sorry, yeah, we're not finished yet. We've just got a couple of extra little th bonus pieces down here. Oh, that's that's 2021 diary, because my desk has this cool pull-out section. Anyway, we've got just two textbooks down here that I was looking at recently. Penguin Russian course, a bit out of date, but oh, it's thorough, sure. And down here we have also, um, oh, where's the front? Living Arabic in Context, an introductory course. This one was given to me 
from by a friend who used this book in uni and then decided after I think he did a year or a semester maybe a year of, of Arabic he said oh, this isn't for me and rather than just keep the book he decided to give it to me which was very nice so thanks buddy so yeah this is actually the end of the video now um, thanks for watching bye